love it when I randomly mention a product in a video and it shows up in my mailbox two weeks later. Nismo 400Z, Nismo 400Z, Nismo 400Z. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by me and the all-new craftcomputing.store. There's no better way to help support the channel than by picking up a set of coasters, whiskey stones, rocks glasses, or any of the other accessories we have to help set up your own home bar. And it's all designed 100% in-house. Visit craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Last month, I took a look at one of the coolest portable monitors I've seen yet in the Quumzy KX, and it addressed pretty much every criticism I've had around portable monitors, at least when it comes to the stands and their physical builds. But it skipped the whole idea of putting a good display into a portable monitor. As I mentioned in that video, I expect pretty much any monitor that costs more than $100 to display 100% of the sRGB color space at this point in time, regardless of its application. And the Quumzy KX couldn't even handle that, with only 90% being renderable and an even worse showing of 70% of the DCI-P3 color space. Nowhere near acceptable for a display that costs around $400. Also, during that review, I mentioned that a portable monitor featuring an OLED panel, one millisecond response time, and incredibly accurate color reproduction could be had for as low as $150. Well, it just so happens that Inacon saw that video and decided to put their product where my mouth was. So this is the Inacon X13 K1F, a 13.3 inch portable OLED monitor with a 1080p resolution, a 60 hertz refresh rate, a pair of USB-C ports for power and data, mini HDMI for devices without USB-C compatibility, all in a very svelte and slim metal enclosure. What sets this monitor apart from basically every other display in the sub $200 price range is its color reproduction. Not only is it rated for 100% of the sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color spaces, each monitor comes factory calibrated. That's a luxury that is almost unheard of for monitors under $400. My standpoint for reviewing portable monitors has always been about the feature add-in value of that device. Adding real estate is a simple task. More pixels equals more room to work. But portable monitors are a dime a dozen that will fit that bill, with some going for well under $100. Anything above that price point should have significant value add when it comes to features, because who wants to pay more for a portable monitor than they would for a Chromebook, which basically comes with the same display inside? And it doesn't get much better on paper than this, a 100% color accurate OLED monitor for just a buck 50. But does it live up to the lofty claims from Inacon's website? Let's find out. Starting with my chief complaint over pretty much every portable monitor, let's go ahead and take a look at the sRGB results. And there's no surprises here. We get 97% gamut coverage of the sRGB space, 143% of the gamut volume, and an average delta E of just 0.07, with a max delta E of 2.05. Not only are these numbers actually better than the included factory calibration sheet from Inicon, a delta E of two or less is at the edge of human perception, meaning nearly every displayed color is going to be basically perfect to your eyes. Now it did take just a bit of tweaking to get the colors that accurate. First off, we set the brightness at just 20% with the contrast set to maximum. The default color temperature setting of 6500K was ever so slightly on the warm side, measuring at 6370K on both of my colorimeters. Setting a user color profile with just 1% less green got us a true white measurement of 6512. Pretty much perfect. For the sRGB color space, Inacon's calibration indicated an average delta E of just 0.7. Meeting out-of-the-box settings are still pretty fantastic, and likely more than good enough for professional work, especially when you consider the $150 price tag of this display. Moving into professional workloads with DCI-P3 for video and photo editing, the results were equally as impressive, with 101% of the gamut volume and an average delta E of just 2.47. The max LTE observed was 7.85, which was only seen at the bottom of the black color testing. As OLED panels have the ability to turn off pixels entirely, giving you their famous true black reproduction, that also means when the pixels turn back on at their minimum power level, they won't necessarily be 100% accurate, something to keep in mind at the darkest levels of this panel. 
For a $150 monitor, those are absolutely incredible results, whether you're looking for a portable monitor or an inexpensive way to proof your work from a desktop PC. As far as other uses, the OLED panel also means phenomenal response times, with little to no motion blur, making it a great option for gaming as well. In fact, Tears of the Kingdom looked absolutely fantastic, whether you're in the depths or soaring over Hyrule. The Inicon X13 K1F isn't without a couple criticisms, though. While the monitor is incredibly thin and light, and has a fantastic fit and finish, I'm not a fan of the kickstand. It's a magnetic arm that attaches to the rear of the housing, and doesn't have enough positive connection to stay attached when you're trying to adjust the angle. The number of times I almost dropped this monitor off my desk while testing leaves me wondering if the $200 you saved by buying this color accurate display should be set aside for purchasing another one in the inevitable tumble that it will take later on. There's also a brightness limitation when running directly off a single USB-C cable for both power and data. Without auxiliary power from a second USB-C port, the monitor caps out at just 20% brightness. This is actually just fine for those looking for the color accuracy of this panel, as 20% brightness produces 120 nit and produces the most accurate colors. But if you were getting excited at the prospect of an inexpensive OLED panel with a full 400 nit brightness, you'll need to run a second cable just for power. It's a bit of an odd choice for Minicon here, as the brightness cap was seen whether connecting to a laptop or a desktop, both of which supported 65 watt power sharing and display modes. But connecting even a 15 watt USB-C power brick allows the X13 K1F to ramp all the way to 100% brightness and a tested 406 nit of brightness. I'm wondering if this is simply a firmware limitation and could be addressed in the future, or if the USB-C power negotiation isn't allowing for full power from a display port source. Either way, the Inicon X13 K1F is still a fantastic value at $149. If you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. And on your way down there, make sure to swing over to craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Other than that, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Mm. How do I replace my blood with this? Beer for today is simply to torment Rhett. This is the Dogfish Head Wake Up Worldwide Stout, clocking in at an absurdly high ABV. Uh, ingredients. This has an ingredient list in it. Malted barley, organic cold pressed coffee, oat milk solids and hops, cinnamon, dextrose, and organic maple syrup. End of list. So the Wake Up Worldwide Stout of the Dogfish Head Worldwide Stout series uh, is kind of their response to the Founders KBS, the Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Uh, maybe even more of the, the CBS, the Canadian Breakfast Stout. Uh, coffee, oatmeal, maple syrup. It's all in there. Perhaps a little bit more bitter and a little bit more bite than I was maybe expecting. It's definitely on the super, super bitter, heavy dark roast side of things, in, as far as the coffee goes, than it is on the sweeter side, like you might expect the Canadian breakfast out to come in with. What's funny though, I taste that, that oats and barley. I the maple syrup is more of a a kiss right on the end of it and because it has so much bite it's it's not a smooth stout it's almost reminiscent of like a breakfast sausage it, it's got a little bit of heat to it and i like that you know what this reminds me most of turkish coffee it's not sweet at all it's very bitter it leaves almost a dry sensation in your mouth. It's very heavy on cinnamon. Just the faintest touch of like a super rich cacao, dark chocolate, but again, not sweet at all. And then just that, just that finish of maple syrup right on the end.
Not enough to sweeten your mouth at all, but just enough to let you know it's there. I need another one of these. What sets this monitor apart from basically every other dis... The hell? Is that your phone? No, my phone's here. Controller rumble? Controller rumble. <laughs> the lightning. <laughs> That's amazing.